Hi guys, my name's Craig and welcome back to my vinyl channel and thanks for clicking on the video. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about remastering and reissuing vinyl records. As you may know, a lot of bands uh, are reissuing their uh, past uh, releases on vinyl and this may or may not involve remastering, but nonetheless, it does involve uh, recutting the records and re repressing them into vinyl records that you and I buy. And the experiences that I've had uh, recently um, have been mixed. And this is what I want to talk to you about, because the question burns in people's minds, is a remastered record or a re-released vinyl record better or worse? than the original pressing. You know, we've got better technology today than we did back in the 70s and 80s or whatever era you want to talk about. And, you know, you would think that we'd have, you know, much better ability to carve better <laughs> records, you know, um, these days uh, with computer technology and, you know, all that stuff. So, just to give you a little um, a little preempt here, and I'm going to brag a little bit because I'm very proud of this. Um, I've been recently collecting um, all of the uh, Rush reissues. Um, I'm a big fan of Rush, and uh, they're a great, great band. So they've been reissuing their um, classic albums on vinyl, and 200 gram vinyl, right? So, you know, you can see you got Fly By Night there. I'm going to try to get these on camera the best I can. Um, 2112, you know, you guys know all these. I mean, these are great albums. I'm going to talk more about these records in a different video. Okay, I want to discuss, whoa, my opinion on, <laughs> that was not good, but it landed safely, so there's no damage, luckily. Uh, shh, don't tell anybody. Um, there's permanent waves. And moving pictures, my favorite. I waited a long time for this. It was, it was. There was a delay in the release of that uh, the reissue, and of course, there's uh, signals. And that's as far as I've gotten so far with collecting these. Whoops. There we go. Sorry, permanent waves. You'll, you're, you'll be okay. It's all good. We got these Blake sleeves on them, so they're protected. So there we have it. I'm a fan of the Blake sleeves, mostly for the records that I don't play a lot. The ones I take out a lot, I like the open-ended ones, and so I don't have to peel the tape off. Anyway, so um, what do I think of these? Well, these particular reissues are fantastic. And I'm so glad that Rush and other bands have decided to reissue their albums on vinyl because in a lot of cases we've got some really really good results here and now in the case of these um, these Rush uh, re-releases uh, the vinyl records are um, carved or cut if you will uh, into copper copper uh, discs instead of the normal method they usually use when they make vinyl records which is if you don't already know um, which they carve the grooves into a uh, aluminum disc covered with lacquer, which is like a sort of a nail polish kind of a plasticky sort of thing, polymer, I don't know, whatever. And they um, carve the grooves into that, and then they use that to make uh, metal um, uh, copies, which are used then to make the stampers that stamp out the records. That's the short version of the process. <laughs> There's a lot more involved with that, but I don't want to get into too much detail there. You can look that up um, there's a excellent, excellent videos on YouTube about how they make vinyl records. So, but the original cutting of the grooves is done in sort of a plastic, you know, lacquer material. And now with these, these are called direct metal masters, DMM. These, when the grooves are actually carved into the uh, original thing that's going to make the stampers, that stamp out the records, they're carved into into copper, not not a lacquer. So this is different. And there's a lot of technical um, uh, issues that they avoid, uh, downfalls that they avoid when they do it this way. Um, and of course, there's all kinds of talk about this online. 
about you know what this could possibly um, do to the sound quality or how much it could improve on it differences that there can be in the high end and, and all this stuff but I will tell you this um, all these records I showed you are done that way with the uh, carving it into copper and I will tell you this I am absolutely amazed in the sound quality um, it just sounds so clean and clear and and if you don't have a quiet turntable I'm talking no hum and no belt or motor noise or vibration or anything then you are going to hear your turntable when you play these records they're that quiet you know in that particular case we're good and whatever they decided to do with the audio if they remastered it or redigitized it all is good in the reissues of the rush vinyl does that mean that you should rush out and buy every single repressed vinyl that there is of your favorite bands well I don't normally talk negative about things I don't like to point fingers but I will tell you I will give you this example because this is something that uh, you know um, if this ever gets back to the um, you know the uh, engineers or producers behind this they need to slap on the hand and this is only one example of a few that I've run across. Here we have ACDC, uh, Back in Black. And this is a reissue, okay, which cost me $24, uh, brand new. It's actually still got the shrink wrap on it, okay? So that's why I just got it in this standard, you know, wrapper or whatever, all right? I bought it. I was happy as hell with it. Great stuff. Beautiful sounding stuff. ACDC on vinyl. Gotta love it. I never had it before and um, I was very happy with it until one day when s somebody gave me a whole pile of vinyl records for free and they were just getting rid of them they didn't want them and they were most of them were very good condition in fact a, a good portion of my small collection here is made up of those uh, those records that were given to me and inside of one of the records you know, I don't know whether it was ELO or some other, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. There was a stray, a stray album that was stuck in there. Just, you know, somebody was half asleep or drunk or something and it was stuck in there. This is an original pressing. It's upside down. Well, here, I'll just turn it around. An original pressing of ACDC Back in Black. Okay. Um, as far as I know, it's one of the original pressings anyways. It's, you know, there's different uh, Australian, American, Canadian, whatever. But it's this is an original release. Okay. Now, so I got curious. And so I, I did a little experiment with back-to-back, -back, pardon the pun, back in black, um, with these two. This being the reissue, the repressing on 180 gram vinyl. And this being the the original, sorry, blocking the microphone, uh, version of the record, just a standard, you know, 100 gram or whatever, whatever these are, 80 gram or whatever, whatever it is, I don't remember. And so what I did was I recorded them onto my computer at very high resolution, very high sampling rate, and all that stuff to get the you know the most accurate sound quality that I possibly could. And I compared them. And I'll tell you something. I am a, I am a musician. I'm a singer. Um, I'm a songwriter. I've been writing songs, you know, almost all my life. You know, so I have an ear. But I'm not an audiophile. I don't consider myself an audiophile. Um, because that's, to me, that's going a little far. Uh, I, I don't pay a thousand dollars for speaker cables and whatnot. So, you know, and generally I'm pretty happy with, you know, most things as long as they're not horrible sounding. But I will tell you this, the, the difference between these two is in incredible. It's unbelievable. Now, you were saying, you might be saying, well, which one's better? Which one's better? 
Is it the reissue that was printed recently and redone all nice and shiny and new? Or is it the old, you know, original pressing that was done back in 1980, whatever, when this was recorded? This one's the winner. Hands down, guys. I mean, it's not like, you know, I've got these golden ears that, you know, can pick out like, oh, you know, there's this different frequency that, you know, come jumps out at this level and this, you know, range. No, there's a definite, like, it's like comparing 8-track to cassette. This being the 8-track. This being the cassette. Okay, so in this particular case, the reissue gets a thumbs down. Sorry, guys. I don't know what your engineers did to it. There's no bottom end. It's very flat. It just doesn't punch. It doesn't pop. Uh, the original pressing um, still plays like a top. It was taken very good care of, even though it was stuck in with some other record randomly. Um, it just sounds so alive. That's my opinion. Okay, so what have we got here? We have a situation where you don't know whether buying a reissue or a repressing or a remastered is going to be better than the original. In a lot of cases, the remastered releases are compressed dynamically. Um, you know, the loudness wars and all that, a whole different conversation there. And it's it, just because it says it's remastered 1999 or remastered 2007 or remastered 2012 or whatever, it doesn't mean it's better. You have to do your homework. You have to put that next to the one that you originally sort of originally downloaded or, you know, ripped or whatever you did and decide for yourself because it's just some guy. He's called the mastering engineer and he decides, oh, you know what? This is this needs a little bit of a change. You know, we're going to make it sound, you know, different than it did originally. It needs to be updated. Yeah. You know, a lot of times this is bad bad not just with vinyl but also with cds and mp3 releases and whatnot any format you can think of this is not always the best case scenario now i don't have it with me it's in my shelf over there fleetwood mac rumors for example okay that was re-released recently and i bought it on vinyl and does it ever sound good I have original pressings of that record, and the re-release sounds fantastic. And the, uh, so, you know, in that particular case, everything came together. They knew what they were doing. They actually had a good set of ears, and they did a good job. And they weren't concerned about loudness wars or anything like that. They wanted it to sound as authentic as possible and, and even better than that without crunching it and crushing it and making it sound loud and just unimpressive and, and getting rid of all the exciting dynamics and punch. They didn't do that with that particular album. And I could go on and on and on about different um, re-released uh, vinyl records that I have uh, received and bought uh, that some of them sound great and some of them don't. Some of them even have errors on them um uh literally just distortion um uh and groove interference where you hear uh a tom hit the the resolution oh, sorry revolution before it comes around you hear it kind of break through the groove like the grooves are touching and they're not supposed to touch and when they do you get this weird distortion it sounds like a crackle and then the next time the record goes around you hear this big tom it's like oh sounds to me like they put these grooves a little too closer too close together and um you know we've got some touching there which cannot it's forbidden for that to happen with vinyl it's not perfect whether the thing was pressed back in 1973 
or whether it was pressed in 2012 or 2015, it doesn't mean that it's better or worse. You have to decide. And unfortunately, that means that you have to stick out your wallet and get spend the money um, and buy the thing and hope that it's, you know, an improvement at least or at least the same as the original pressing that you might have that's a little bit beat up. Um, and, uh, you know, you were hoping for an, a fresh start with the re-release and, well, it may or may not happen. And so, you know, if, if I had something to say to, um, you know, the engineers, the, you know, the mastering engineers or the record, uh, pressing engineers or, you know, whatever all these guys, you know, titles are. It's, you know, if, if it was, if it wasn't broken in the first place, then don't fix it. And we don't want loudness. We don't want loud. We want dynamics. We want punch. We want those quiet passages. And then those loud punch and rock and um, portions of the songs that stick you up against a wall and go, hey, I'm the boss. That's my take on vinyl reissues and remastering. And if you're curious about what mastering is, it's like what you do with, you know, an equalizer, you know, they've got several pieces of hardware that they use to, to compress, um, boost certain frequencies, um, lower certain frequencies, um, and correct possible um, uh, problems that there could be with the um, the original track. Perhaps you know it won't uh, sound good on vinyl if it's if if these things aren't done to it. You know it won't track properly or you know whatever. Uh, when you're mastering for vinyl, you do have to be very conscious of how vinyl works and how people's turntables are going to be able to play back that record. There are certain things that are just forbidden that you just can't, you can't have in the grooves or it just won't play right. And that's completely understandable. And a good uh, mastering engineer will um, know how to do that and what to do with that. And a bad mastering engineer will not know what to do with it. And when you get the record back, it'll either skip or there'll be noise or some other problem with it where you'll hear... Um, uh, echoes or, or weird distortions from track to, from groove to groove because of the grooves touching each other, which they shouldn't. And there should be um, much uh, care taken uh, in when you carve these things. And so that, you know, when you the finished product comes out, it's as perfect as it can be for the money that we're paying for these darn repressings. And does 200 gram or 180 gram vinyl sound better than the original uh what is it 100 gram 80 to 100 gram vinyl in my experience it can and can't it can sound better and sometimes it doesn't sound better sometimes it's noisy uh and it doesn't matter if you take a, a record and you press it onto 200 gram uh vinyl discs and it's improperly mastered, improperly cut, improperly uh, processed during its, you know, uh, turning it into a stamper so that it can stamp out the, uh, the records. If that's done wrong, then it doesn't matter how many grams the damn thing is. It ain't going to sound good. It's going to be noisy. There's going to be cracks. There's going to be weird, you know, background noise. It doesn't matter. So when you see 200 gram or 180 gram Okay, that's cool. But that's only one aspect of what can make it sound good. And if everything else was done wrong, doesn't matter how heavy that record is, it ain't going to sound good. So don't be fooled by all these gimmicks and, you know, numbers and stuff like that. It's the same with everything else, you know. Every step of the process has to be done properly. And even if everything's done properly and it's only stamped onto a thin old 100 gram vinyl, it's still going to sound much better 
than a 180 to 200 gram vinyl that was processed improperly. It is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this gave you some sort of insight or information into this topic. Please leave your comments down below. And hey, why not subscribe? I got lots more things to talk about here on Vinyl TV. Um, interesting stuff. And uh, just I have a lot going on here. This is a new channel, so I'm fired with lots of topics that I want to discuss. So please come back and check it out. And the best way to do that is to subscribe and post your comments down below and thumb up the video if you like it. Support it, and I'll still come back, and I'll do it over and over again. We'll keep this channel alive, okay? It's up to you. Thank you so much. And remember, vinyl is final. Cheers. <laughs>